that's Las Vegas Regional. Like Kelly, you're in your fourth semifinal in six years. What stood out about the way this year's team has been able to get back here after missing the playoffs last year? Yeah, we're real happy to be in the conference final. We're uh, a rematch of a series that we had a couple of years ago. And, uh, you know, really uh, to date has been a really good season. We had a franchise record for uh, points with 111 points. We had 25 wins at home, 26 wins on the road. Uh, we've beat two really good teams uh, in the playoffs to get to the final four. Uh, we're healthy. We're excited to be uh, playing at this time of year. So uh, we're where we want to be in terms of uh, in terms of our team right now, Ben. Right side. Kelly, when you're Dan Rosen, NHL.com. Kelly, when, when you're building a team, when you're uh, in your mind, the team that you like, how, how much do you do you put a lot of value on size on the back end? Because you look at your team, there's it's a big defense group that's mobile too. I and mean, is that a big factor in how you like a team to look? Well, there's real good defensemen in the NHL that aren't big. Uh, it's interesting. We just had the conversation this morning. I sure think in playoffs, size, uh, size of your team does uh, have an impact. We're big up front as well. Uh, and when we played Edmonton, they have a real big team. So I think you see uh, when you when you watch the different series that sometimes it can be tough for uh, for people to get to the front of the net if uh, if you're not big enough. And I think the the flip side, more specific to your question, uh, you know, a big defense I think uh, is helpful uh, at this time of year. And obviously you have to be able to play, right? So there's some tremendous uh, defensemen that are undersized that uh, any team would love to have, but I like the makeup of our group. I think the growth uh, on our back end of uh, the Hague White Cloud pair, I think has really uh, been significant, really been noticeable and really uh, helpful to our team. The way that uh, John Stevens is able to utilize the group of six, I think has uh, really helped our team get to this point. Second row the left. Ryan Clark, ESPN. Kelly, I mean, you look at the way this team is and this franchise has been, it seems like it kind of takes everyone and guys come in and they're able to assimilate right away. Like, what do you think it's been that's allowed this organization to keep that from day one to where when guys come here, it's easy for them to settle in, assimilate to where even they say, hey, their wives and girlfriends, they feel like they're part of something big. What do you think that's been? I think that it's a reflection of a real good organization, beginning with, uh, with Bill Foley. I think we've had... Um, Continuity with some really good people, uh, you know, from day one. We've still got you know six players left from uh, that original team. I think we put a lot of onus on the type of people uh, that we bring in. I think we've got good uh, good chemistry with our players. We've got a very good culture uh, as an organization, and I think those things uh, show themselves in many different ways. And and uh, some of the things you've touched on would be uh, would be what I'm speaking to. Questions for Kelly. Uh, Kelly, just what's it been like to work with Bruce this year and how impressed have you been with the job he's done with this team? Yeah, Bruce has uh, done a great job for us and, and I always uh, sort of add to that because I know Bruce would be the first to credit uh, his staff as well. I think collectively uh, they've done a really good job. We had a lot of injuries this year to our team. Uh, we still had 111 points in 82 uh, game regular season, which allowed us to finish first in the Pacific. Uh, by, <clears throat> by, and as well first in the conference. And when you look at, uh, you know, the job that the coaches did when we had to go to Henderson for, uh, for reinforcements, I think that's where you saw them do some of their best work. They kept us relevant. They kept us in a position where we still found ways to win. When you look at, uh, you know, Shea Theodore missing almost 30 games, Zach Whitecloud missing 25 games, Alex Petrangelo missed. Uh, nine or ten with the family situation. We had a stretch in December where all those players were out, and you know I think the uh, the staff did a really good job with uh, using our people from Henderson to continue to find ways uh, to win. I've talked uh, before. I talked to Dan the other day about uh, you know Bruce does a really good job of keeping people accountable, and yet uh, doing it in a way that uh, is respectful and players know. Uh, where he's coming from and understand it's about, uh, you know, a team, it's about winning. And I think that's uh, uh, really showed itself over the course, uh, the course of the year. And I think in our series with Winnipeg, our series with Edmonton, there's different things that happen over the course of a seven game series where uh, you're coaching, you're coaching in games, you're coaching between games, you're making adjustments that uh, are required. Uh, every team in playoffs 
presents uh, its own challenges. And, and I just remember you know, over the years when you, when you finish one series and you might be you know, glad to see the last of this guy, uh, and then you get to the next series, well, they've got another challenge, right? So, you know, not unlike Edmonton, where you move on from, uh, you know, two of the best players in the world, arguably the two best players in the world, you get to Dallas, well, you know, big team, great balance, great depth, four-line team, uh, you know, a Norris uh, caliber defenseman on uh, on the blue line and a goalie with uh, with real good pedigree and playoff experience. So, you know, the challenges are always going to be there for you, and I think that's where your coaching at this time of year is really important. Front right. Jesse Granger with The Athletic. Um, it's been a while since we've asked for an update on Robin Leonard. I'm just wondering if you can provide any insight into where he's at in the process and maybe what his next steps are. Uh, Robin is getting uh, rehab still uh, on his, uh, on his uh, both hips uh, still. I'm not exactly sure in terms of a timeline how close he is to the finish line. That's, uh, yeah, that, I'm just not up to speed on that. Stay on the right. Uh, Kelly, what's noticeable to you with this team when Mark Stone is on the ice as he is in these playoffs and when he was missing for the last, what was that, two, three months of the, se the regular season? What's, what's the noticeable difference? Well, he's he's the player that really, since the day he arrived, is is uh, has been the straw that stirs the drink for for the different uh, uh, traits that he brings to our team. The the things you see with his uh, you know outward emotion, his passion to win, uh, his excitement when he scores, his excitement when a teammate scores, but uh, just how complete a player he is with uh, uh, with his the hockey sense, his skill set. You know, really good defensive player, really good offensively, big, and uh, you know, to your point, he missed uh, 39 games uh, this season. So uh, maybe should have included that when we were talking uh, about the question about the coaching. Um, you know, we went through. You know, that was going into the All Star break. I believe it was January 12th when uh, Mark uh, was injured against Florida. We struggled going into the All Star break. Uh, the decision was made at the break for Mark to get surgery, and then. You know, really, uh, I, I think w where the benefit may have been is it forced the rest of us to adapt to this new version of ourselves because Mark wasn't going to be part of it. So there was no sense waiting for him to be back. We had to, uh, we had to move on uh, without him, and that's where uh, you know our season we finished really strong. Whatever it was, twenty-two, four, and five, or whatever those numbers were uh, at the end. And it was interesting coming out of the All Star break. We probably have talked about this in the past, but just how many teams in the West took off. Minnesota had a tremendous run. Edmonton uh, had a tremendous run. Dallas did, and uh, Colorado uh, came from behind the pack to finish first in their division. So the Western Conference games, those last 30 games were, uh, uh, were really competitive, really good teams playing well at that time. Second round the left. Danny Webster, Las Vegas Sun. Kelly, uh, off topic, just wanted to know if there was an update on the Henderson coaching search and the decision to move on from Manny. Uh, is there an update on that? Yeah, we've uh, uh, postponed that. We've had discussions internally about what we uh, want the process to look like. Uh, haven't uh, spoken directly to any candidates at this point. That's uh, uh, something that we'll work towards uh, soon after our season ends. Those are going to be that's going to be the timeline for that type of stuff. We have time for two more questions. Stand to the left.